Welcome back, McGee TV VHS subscribers. PlayStation fans rejoice. You are not ready. Crash is back. Crash Bandicoot Warped is the third installment of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. This game is awesome and I can't wait to check it out. So come on dudes, let's take a look. Crash has never faced greater odds as the fate of the universe lies in his hands as he battles not only Dr. Neo Cortex, but also his boss, the evil Uka Uka. Wait a minute, this looks better than I remember it. That's because this is the all new Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy for PlayStation 4. A beautiful remaster of the original Crash Bandicoot Trilogy Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is far more than just another port of a classic video game franchise. Activision and Vicarious Visions get it right by reusing both the original level designs crafted by Naughty Dog and the talented cast of voice actors. In addition to these elements, the developers improved the gameplay, sound, and graphics of the original three games. A standardized set of smooth and satisfying controls across all three titles further ties the game into a single cohesive gaming experience in this new collection. In replaying the original Crash Bandicoot for this video review, I was surprised that the game did not support the analog controls of the DualShock controller. This makes sense as the game was released over 20 years ago. Released in 1996, Crash Bandicoot predates the North American release of the DualShock controller by about two years. Rather than merely applying a new coat of paint, the developers created new animations and new graphics to breathe life into the low-resolution polygons of yesteryear. While impressive for the time, the character models in the original Crash Bandicoot definitely show their age. In particular, a few enemy characters are simplistic and lack detail. The massively higher polygon count combined with new animations found in Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy bring these enemy characters to life. Instead of the mannequin-like shapes of the first game or the low detail models of the second and third games, the enemies of Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy exhibit greater personality through more fluid movement and distinct facial expressions thanks to high graphical fidelity. Non-interactive cutscenes feature the same polish replacing boxy, cartoon-like models with highly detailed models with realistic textures such as Crash's fur. While running through the familiar levels I found myself in awe of the graphics. I felt like I was playing a Pixar movie. The impressive new sound design pays tribute to the game's memorable tunes and familiar sound effects. Improved clarity of sound thanks to more powerful hardware produces a clearer sound than the CD music of the original trilogy. Carefully listening to the original games in the new collection, I heard a few additional instruments in the music tracks. While clearly retaining the original melodies and arrangements, the soundtrack shares the attention to detail found throughout the rest of Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Unfortunately, due to YouTube's copyright policies, I cannot provide a demonstration of the soundtrack changes between the original and the remastered trilogy. One very cool new feature in this collection is the ability to play as Crash's sister Coco in all three games. To unlock her, you must play the first game and defeat Papu Papu. Upon your victory, Crash will return to the world map, where Coco's time machine appears outside of the level. Walk over to the time machine and you will receive the option to play with Coco. Afterwards, you may switch characters between levels. Some levels like Hogwild in the first Crash game, and Orient Express in Crash Bandicoot Warped are character specific and will allow you only to play as Crash or Coco. Coco controls in the same manner as Crash, but sports her stylish laptop and toe. I found a cool easter egg in the remastered version of Crash Bandicoot Warped. Nathan Drake of the Uncharted series appears as a framed photograph in Crash's house during one of the opening cutscenes. I am sure this is a tribute to the Crash Bandicoot easter egg in Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. My only real complaint about the new collection is the load times. Uncommonly long load screens between levels and between some cutscenes slow the experience. I played the game on a standard issue PlayStation 4. 
I don't have the money for a PlayStation Pro at the moment, so I cannot say if it improves the load times or not. Having grown up playing Sega CD and early PlayStation titles, I am patient with long load times, but I expect better of current games, and I am sure that younger audiences share that expectation. I played the original Crash Bandicoot in high school. It was my first game for the PlayStation, and the graphics impressed me then, as Crash's world seemed more detailed and crisp than Princess Peach's castle in Super Mario 64. I have many fond memories of playing some of the early PlayStation titles. Crash Bandicoot stands out as one of the best 3D platforming games of that era. Despite the minor flaw regarding load times, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy succeeds in bringing back the version of Crash Bandicoot loved by his fans and introducing him to a new generation with amazing graphics, controls, and sound. I highly recommend Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy to anyone who wants to run, to jump, and to surf down memory lane, and to anyone who has never experienced that great fun. Thanks for watching, dudes and dudettes. Please let me know if you agree or disagree with my review by commenting below or visiting us at mcgeetv.com or on social media at mcgee underscore tv on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also check out Evan and myself on Twitch at mcgee underscore tv and xxscissorpxxgaming. Finally, please like and subscribe for future content and as always, thanks for tuning in.